welcome to my channel the craft you Creech. today i am going to show you how i turn an old vintage cabinet into a beautiful work of art if you like creating and refinishing furniture or crafts please like and subscribe to my channel i appreciate it so much thanks for watching I was scrolling through Facebook Marketplace and seeing a listing for some free items that were pretty close to me. So we had plans on going out and about anyways. We drove by and we snatched up this cute little vintage nursery cabinet. It is solid wood. It needed some work. It had a lot of just like dirty areas and not a really great paint job. So I decided to do a textured finish on this to kind of give it um, an easier way to cover up all of that. So I took a lacquer thinner and I poured it on some drip marks from the previous paint job just to kind of loosen up that paint and then I took a scraper and did my best to chisel it off. As you can see it came off pretty easily after a little bit of work. I put some lacquer thinner on a rag and just wiped everything off and just scrubbed at it a little bit. I also like to use lacquer thinner if I'm painting the drawers and I may accidentally get a little bit on the side of my drawer. I can just put some lacquer thinner on a rag and then I can wipe it off and it comes off super easy in case I'm a little sloppy or a little bit messy. Another good use for lacquer thinner is to remove stickers or any other gooey residue you might find on surfaces that might be kind of tough to get off. Lacquer thinner usually gets through it pretty easily. Okay, so everything has been scuff sanded and cleaned really well. I'm just going to go over all of this with a coat of white chalk paint um, not the main parts but the inside where all of everything is painted just to give it a nice fresh coat of white to make it look a little bit better so I'm gonna go ahead and do that nice fresh coat of white paint all on the inside today I'm going to be working on the textured paint finish and hopefully I can get to the molds and put some of those on. So this is all anthropology inspired and I'm going to do, my vision is like a tree or something right here with some branches just kind of spreading over the drawers. I just took the salt grinder ground it up into this bowl these are just from the dollar store they're like a well it's not technically a dollar store anymore it's a dollar 25 at the dollar tree um i think i'm just gonna start off with this one have your kids or somebody do this because this is not like super fun it's kind of boring grinding this Okay, so I mixed my salt into my paint and I added a little bit of water and then I just brushed everything and dabbed it on here and there and you can see it's kind of clumpy which is good and I create different layers um, peeking through all those little high spots so yeah here it is so far it looks like a hot mess but it will be beautiful now I just need to wait for everything to dry. So that might be about 25, 30 minutes before I can start on another coat of paint. 
here I am putting on my main coat of paint. This is going to be my main color and it's like a blue green. It's super pretty. It's just, I love it. It's, I love blues, anything blue or green. I just, I'm drawn to it. I am just taking it and I'm just brushing it on lightly. I want some of the other color to show through so I'm not putting on a heavy thick coat. And then I'm also going over my textured areas where I did my salt wash. So parts of the under color, which is like the gray, is showing through a little bit here and a little bit there. It's always so amazing to me how spending 15 hours sometimes on a project and I'm trying to fit it into a 30 minute video or less. I had a lot of fun with this piece. I love being artistic and dry brushing and I'm just kind of going in different directions and even swirling the paint around trying to get a nice textured finish. Doing a textured finish is great when you have a piece that might be previously painted and isn't painted very well. It might have a lot of drip marks or there might be damages that need to be covered up. This is just a really easy way to cover up all those imperfections and just give it a real beautiful look that is original and unique. And of course, without all of the headache of stripping everything down and taking it to a bare even finish or fixing things, this is something I really enjoy doing when I have a piece that is going to need a lot of work, that's going to take me longer to do all of those types of things versus just doing a textured finish. When I first got this piece, I thought that's what I wanted to do, that I, I thought that I was going to strip it all down and take it down to the bare wood and start from scratch, but it would have just been too much work and I would not have gotten my time back when it came to selling this. So therefore, that was a huge part of my decision. I essentially didn't know if I was going to be opening up Pandora's box of paint colors. This piece was painted literally everywhere, on the inside, on the drawers. Taking all of that off would have been just a huge hassle. I went ahead and painted the back of this piece as well in this blue color just to freshen that all up and make it look a little bit more cohesive and just a little bit more high end as the wood back was stained a bit. On my third color, I used a grayish, and this is just leftover paint from another project. I just took a little bit of paint and I dabbed it on my brush and I just dry brushed over certain areas where there were high points like the corners or my textured areas and as well as on the handles. I also periodically added a tiny bit of water to my brush to spread the dark grayish paint out here and there to create a watercolor effect and sort of blend the paint to create some shadows and some low lights. There really is no wrong way to do this. Just have fun with it and be creative. It's always so crazy to me that I can take three or four days of work on a piece and jam it all into 
a less than 30 minute video. If you are interested in seeing any of my previous work, you can go to my Facebook page, The Crafty Creech, Crafty with a K, and you can see some of my older work I have done, as well as you can follow me on Instagram. on my fourth color of paint and this is just like a light creamy color and I'm going to just dip my paintbrush in it and it's leftover paint from another project so it's kind of gooey and dried up but that is okay because that's going to even add more texture to this piece. I'm just taking my paintbrush and dipping it in this paint and dry brushing all over my piece again, just subtly giving it highlights on the corners and on the edges of the drawers and the door. A little tiny bit of paint really goes a long way. It's true, the difference is the same. I took some air dry clay that I purchased on Amazon and I just rolled it out on my countertop. This reminds me of being a kid when I used to take clay or Play-Doh and make like little snakes or something. But I just rolled it out and I made them different lengths before I were to glue them on. This works best to glue your clay on while it's still sort of uh, wet so that way it's movable and you don't form any cracks. The clay tends to get brittle the longer it's left out in the air so try to work quickly with it 
And then I just took some Gorilla Glue and glued them on. You can also use E6000 glue, works really well. I suggest wearing gloves. I did put some on later on as this stuff is hard to get off of your hands. And also try to work in a ventilated area as it's pretty stinky. I had some previously made molds that I made the day before and I let them dry so that way once I had my branches on, I could go ahead and start gluing on the leaves and the flowers. Where I wanted the flowers and the leaves to overlap on top of the branches, I made sure I put those on while they were still wet, so that way they would lay flat on top of my branches and I wouldn't have any difficulty gluing them on while they were completely dry. If you guys are still watching, I really hope you're enjoying this video and my version of this anthropology inspired cabinets. On my tree trunk and all of my branches, I took a toothpick and I just created some texture. I was kind of thinking like a birch tree or something like that. So I just took my little toothpick and rubbed it across the trunk and the branches while the clay was still wet to create a little bit of texture like birch bark. I wanted a little fun surprise when you opened up the drawers, so I added a stencil on the side of the drawers. Once my clay had dried completely, I took the piece back outside and I sealed everything with lacquer. I did three coats. 
I definitely wanted to make sure it was good and sealed, especially the textured finish. I think it turned out great. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Together, I think I've spent maybe approximately $20 on the dresser for materials cost-wise and uh, I spent about 15 hours on it. The longest part was applying the, the air dry clay. Um, yeah, that was the hardest part was the air dry clay. Um, I sold this piece for $275. The whole cabinet was free. So I think I did pretty good on my profit and I'm happy with it and I'm excited how it turned out. I think it is really beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I hopefully I inspired you to go and make a beautiful work of art of your own. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.